Yeshua. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Yeshua. This is the day Yahweh has made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Amen. I will bless Yahweh at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah.
rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Hallelujah. Praise Yeshua. He's an awesome God. Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. He's a healing God. Hallelujah. I give him all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor for all that he's done and all that he will do. Hallelujah. Give thanks always in all things. Hallelujah. Praise Yeshua. His name alone is excellent. Hallelujah. Awesome God. Creator of all the earth. Awesome God. He's a ruler. Ruler of the universe. Everlasting Father. Never changing power, unmistakably awesome God. Hallelujah. Praise him. Hallelujah. He's awesome. Awesome God. Creator of all the earth. Awesome God. He's a ruler. Ruler of the universe. Everlasting Father.
Yeshua, let us go before Yahweh in prayer. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Yeshua. Father, you said in your word to study, to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, Father, we just thank you and praise you for this time to study your word. And as we study your word, work it in your people this day to get that word in their hearts so we can be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving our own selves. We bind any spirit that would try to distract that would try to hinder any spirit that is not like you, that would try to interfere with your word going forth, that would try to interfere with your people receiving it. We bind those spirits right now, for you said in your word, behold, I gave unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Father, use me as your anointed vessel to give the people wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in every situation, for you said wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and all thy getting, get an understanding. Use me as your anointed vessel to reveal deep things unto the people this day. You said in your word, I have not seen, nor ears heard, neither have entered to the heart of man. The things which Yahweh has prepared for them that love him, but Yahweh has revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searches all things. Yea, the deep things of Yahweh. Father, as I'm up here, let it be all of you and none of me. It is not by power nor by might. But by my spirit, said the Lord God of hosts, we thank you. We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor for it. In Yeshua's mighty name, Amon and Amon. Hallelujah. Let's give him one more hand. Praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Yeshua. He is an awesome God. And today I'm going to talk about living righteously and living a life that is pleasing to Yahweh. One of the first things I want to go over, it's a familiar scripture. I want to go to Psalms chapter 37, because the first point I want to make is that in order to live a life that is pleasing to Yahweh, you can't be envious or jealous of those out there in the world. And I remember growing up, I got saved when I was 16, and I saw a lot of kids my age having quote unquote or so-called fun, and I was envious. And I was ignorant at that time because Really, if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, and if you have the name of Yeshua, if you are saved and you are headed to you are headed to heaven in the afterlife, why on earth would we be jealous or envious of those who are in sin? But yet sometimes believers, people who have been saved, are like that because they believe that they don't have any enjoyment in the kingdom of Yahweh. But I can tell you this. When you serve Yahweh and you lay aside all the sins and the weights, there's more pleasure in the things that you are doing for Yahweh than anything out there that you can get caught up in or anything out there in the world that you think you might receive. 
So let's take a look first at Psalms chapter 37. Verse 1, and verse 1, I'm going to read up to the ninth verse. And it says, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Don't be envious of those, in, or don't worry about all those who are caught up in a life of sin, who are doing a lot of wrong and getting away with it. And we see a lot of it in this country at the moment. We see people, see politicians, those in the government, who are uh, people who are actually running for office, who have been doing wrong, committing crimes, caught up in greed and corruption, and it might disturb us. Sometimes I'm listening to the news, MSNBC or CNN, and I hear the news, and at times a lot of that stuff that is going on, it disturbs me. It disturbs my peace. But God does not want us to worry about these things, and he also does not want us to be envious. As true believers, he does not want us to be envious or be jealous of those who are in sin, and it actually seems like they are prospering in their sin. He says, neither be thou envious of workers of iniquity. That's a terrible thing. You have the Holy Spirit, you have the name of Yeshua, you have the word of God in you, and yet for whatever reason, Satan is still planting thoughts in your head and making you think that you were better off when you were out there. And that's what he did to me after I first got saved, and that was part of the reason I left the church for a number of years until I finally reached that age of maturity, and I realized really that there was nothing good out there. It's all a mirage. Satan makes you think that that stuff is pleasurable, but in the end, what does it bring you? It brings you heartache and grief. That's all it brings you. Alcohol in the end isn't good for you. Fornication and adultery in the end is not gonna do you any good. It's just gonna bring you heartache and grief. Going to clubs, doing drugs, all that stuff is no good for you. There's a reason why Yahweh tells you to stay away from it. It's not to ruin your fun. It's so that you can live a happy and productive life so that you can have fun in your life. So it says, don't be envious of them because they will get their reward. It says, for they shall, be, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. If they don't re repent, they will eventually deal with the consequences of their actions. Each action that you take has a consequence. It can either be something positive that happens or it can be something negative. Wisdom is knowing the end result of each action and each deed. And if you continue to be envious of these people that are out there in the world and you even start to partake in some of that sin, then the, action, the results of your actions, the results of your deeds, it will not bring anything positive into your life. In the end, all it's going to do, all that stuff, all that sin in the end is going to do, going to take you to hell. And in some cases, I know this from past personal experience, in some cases, it will cause you to live a life of hell on earth. And that's a terrible thing to go through living in hell on earth and then going to hell in the afterlife on top of that. So he says, what should we do then when these things begin to disturb us? Trust in Yahweh. God wants us to put all of our trust and all of our faith in him. The scripture says that without faith, it is impossible to live a life that is pleasing to Yahweh. So Yahweh wants us, regardless of what the enemy is trying to come against us with, that Yahweh wants us to do what? He wants us to trust in Yahweh and do what? And do good. And there are times where Satan will try to throw things at you so that you can't do good, so that you can't accomplish the things that Yahweh wants you to accomplish. And the scripture said, and there are times wherein he will try to tempt you, and there are times wherein he will try to throw everything at you, and then the kitchen sink. So what are we supposed to do when he does that? The scripture says to pray that you enter not into temptation. Prayer helps you. It builds your spirit up so that when the time comes, you, your soul will be prepared to be able to resist that temptation. The scripture says, submit yourself, therefore, unto Yahweh, resist the devil, and then he shall what? Then he shall flee from you. Part of submitting to Yahweh is living a life of uh, uh, being instant in prayer. So, um, let me move on. And then we need to find the joy in serving 
Yavah. He says to do what? Delight thyself in Yavah. Find the joy in living for Yavah. It's a joyful thing to go out and get people saved. It's a joyful thing when you come to church and the Holy Spirit takes over the service. It's a joyful thing to do all that Yavah has called you to do. It's a joyful thing when you are praying, and then after years of praying, your prayers are answered. So he says to delight thyself in the Lord. First, you've got to seek Yavah. Find out all the things that he has called you to do, and don't leave anything out. So it says, delight thyself in the Lord, and then as you find the joy in serving Yavah, it says, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. You won't have to go out chasing the blessings. The blessings will come upon you, and I talked about this on, in Sunday school, in Deuteronomy, the blessings of Deuteronomy, wherein those blessings will come upon you, and they will do what? Overtake you. You won't have to go chasing the blessings. I've been there. At times, in times past when I wasn't doing right, and I was, especially in my time out of the church, I was actually trying to chase down blessings, and it seemed like, it seemed like I was just going around, Seemed like I was just going around in circles, and no matter how hard I tried, my life was still a mess. And my life was a mess for seven long years until I got back in Yeshua, until I returned to the church, and then finally those blessings that I was chasing, I no longer had to chase. I began to accomplish things that I never could have accomplished when I was out in the world. Why? Because I began to delight myself in Yavah. So then we have to make a commitment to him. It says, verse 5, to commit thy way unto Yavah. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. So what does it mean? Trust in him, and he will cause that, all that joy and all those blessings to come to pass in your life. And it says in verse 6, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. And then it says something in verse 7. It says, rest in Yavah and wait what? Patiently for him. That's a word that people don't always like to hear. That word called patient. Because patience means you might have to wait for something to come to pass. And you might have to wait for that blessing to come to pass. Or wait for God to deliver you out of a situation that might, be, that might be uncomfortable, and you might have to wait for what? An extended period of time. But what does God say? We know that God makes all things beautiful in his time. So what happens a lot of times is people get a little impatient, and then they begin to go, off, go out, and they begin to do their own thing, and then when it turns out messed up, because they haven't been seeking Yahweh, then they get upset and e they even want to blame Yahweh. But God wants to, us to wait patiently on him. And why is that? Because patience is a virtue. It said, fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way. Again, this just reiterates that we are not to worry just because we see people actually prospering even as they do wrong. And it says, because of the man who bring wicked devices. And then God tells us to do something else. I talk a lot about controlling your emotions, controlling your anger. And as we're talking about living a life that is pleasing to Yavah, anger is a key thing that we need to, we need to, we need to, we need to get rid of, as I've heard Bishop talk about, need to get rid of those buttons. Because Satan will send situations, he will send people at you, people that he can use to push those buttons. And really, it is not them, but it is a spirit that is working inside of them. But a lot of times, what do people do when somebody does them wrong? Or a lot of times what it is, is we perceive in our soul that somebody has done us wrong, and really that person did not mean to do us any harm, but a lot of times people do, we feel like people do us wrong and then we want to get angry, and then we want to sin against them and do wrong back to them. But what does Yahweh say about anger? You know, I've talked about the, the scripture that says, be angry and sin not. So that means that anger is a natural emotion that you go through. But, that does, but it's not in how, 
It, it, it's not, it, some, I heard somebody say a long time ago, do not react, but respond. How do you respond when that anger begins to stir up inside of you? And then there's another scripture I like to use concerning anger. It says, he that is soon angry dealeth what? Foolishly. When you allow that anger to consume you, it can cause you to respond or react in a foolish way. We have people that have allowed their anger to get the better of them to the point wherein they end up being behind bars for life. Or if it's not that, that anger can tear up a relationship. People have lost their jobs. I've lost jobs when I was out there in the world because I allowed my anger to get the better of me and I allowed myself to say, and I, I, it caused me to say something to two different supervisors. And mind you, this is during the time that I was outside of the church. This has not happened in the years since then. And, and then another time, I think my anger actually did get the better of me. This might have been back in 2006. This is right after I became a minister. And since then, I haven't let that anger get the better of me when it comes to my job. But there was a time wherein my supervisor saw me talking to somebody, and I was supposed to be working. And he, and he started screaming at me at the top of his lungs. Now, if I had been a minister at that time, maybe I, I would have handled it properly, but I was outside of the church, and I was doing all kinds of things. And he told me to go home, and maybe he was wrong for the way that he was talking to me, but then he told me to go home and change, and I told him point blank, that if I go home to change, I'm not, if I go home to change, I'm not coming back to work. And he told me basically to have a nice life. Why is that? Because I let my words, I, I, my wor I ended up letting that anger, that emotion get the better of me, and I ended up saying something that I had no business saying. The scripture says, be quick to hear and slow to speak. And I think it's connected to that scripture that talks about anger. But I was not quick to hear, and I was not slow to speak, and I allowed that anger to cost me a job that I needed at that time. And then even the job, I was still outside of the church at that time, and even the job that I had afterwards, you know, my, my the supervisor, and I was working, I believe, at a shoe store again. Wasn't a great job, but it was putting some money in my pocket. And there was a supervisor. At first, he told me I, he was just going to put me on suspension for two days. I should have just accepted that, said, okay, you're the boss, and moved on. Instead, I got a little bit sarcastic with him, and I told him, I told him, well, good, I can use a little bit of a break. I can use a little bit of vacation. And he said, in no uncertain terms, goodbye, you're fired. That's what anger can do to you. It, when you allow anger to consume you, it causes you, and you begin to act upon it, it can cause you to say things, it can cost you things that you hold near and dear. It can cost you relationships, it can cost you a job, it can cost you your freedom. In some cases, it can cost you your life if you say and do the wrong things. So what does God's word say about anger here? It says, Seek for, cease from anger, forsake thy wrath, and fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Stop meditating on evil constantly. If somebody says or does something that rubs you the wrong way, don't worry about it. Put it in Yahweh's hands. God says to cast all of our care upon him, for he cared for us. And this talks about the end result for those who are doing evil because a lot, of a, time, a lot of times we see people doing evil, and as I said, it looks like they are prospering. It actually looks like they're in a state of being blessed even as they do evil. But it says what the end result of all that evil is in verse 9. It says, for evildoers shall be cut off. But the Lord, but those who wait upon Yahweh, those who are truly serving Yahweh, they shall inherit the earth. So as we go, let's now take a look. We're going to continue to look at why we need to live a life that is pleasing to Yahweh. And I want to talk about how these are the end times. We see a lot of negative things. We see a lot of chaos going on in the world today. And God wants us, but God does not want us to worry about these things. But God does, throughout these end times, want us to live in a state of righteousness. He wants us to live a life that is holy and acceptable unto him. Let's take a look at 2 Timothy chapter 3.
2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And it says, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. So that word perilous just means dangerous. And we see a lot of things going on. See things going on, as I said, specifically with our government here in the United States. We see a war, a war between Russia and Ukraine. Ukraine. We see something with Israel and Hamas. See a lot, and there are a lot of other things, things we don't even know about going on in the world today. So God is just forewarning us that these are the last days, and we're seeing signs of it. We've been seeing signs for, for, from it for years, and it's not going to get any better. It's only going to get worse as that day approaches. It says, for men shall be what? Lovers of their own selves. Covetous. What does it mean to be covetous? Well, when it, covetous is when you see somebody that is getting blessed, and then you are angry that they have received that blessing. You want what they have, and you don't want them to have it. God does not want us to operate in that way, but he says that in the last days, these things shall happen. Boasters. What does it mean to be a boaster? Showing excessive pride and self-satisfaction in one's accomplishments possessions, or abilities. You have people out there that think more highly of themselves than what they ought to think. They think that they've accomplished all a whole lot, but yet they don't want to give credit. And even if you have accomplished something great, know that it really isn't you that did it. It was Yahweh that did it. But a lot of times people don't want to humble themselves. They want to take all the credit instead of being humble. Anytime I accomplish something, or anytime somebody gives me credit for something, I know it's Yahweh that did it because I've seen, I've seen what I can accomplish on my own. I've seen it throughout all that time that I was out, outside the church. And I've seen where, what I can accomplish. And it wasn't much. My life was not good before, during that time that I was outside the church. And that's putting it mildly. There are a lot of things that I dealt with that I haven't even discussed. But, but in the end... You, so I know that in the end, anything that I accomplished, it was Yahweh that worked it in me to get those great things accomplished. And then it talks about being proud, a feeling of deep pleasure. So this is connected to boasting because pride is a feeling of deep pleasure in one's achievements. And again, you don't want to give credit where credit is due. We saw one of the greatest stories we talked about in, in a past message talked about how Satan's pride got him kicked out of heaven because he actually wanted to, he actually thought that he could make himself higher than Yahweh. And Satan was one of the, he was the greatest angel in the kingdom of heaven, but in the end, his pride caused him to suffer what? A great fall. He went from being the greatest angel in the kingdom of heaven, the most beautiful angel in the kingdom of heaven, to now in his end, He's going to be tossed into the lake of fire. Don't allow that pride, that feeling of pride, to cause you to suffer a great fall. So it says, proud, blasphemers, showing contempt for things of Yahweh, showing contempt for spirituality. Don't let yourself get to that point where you have gotten caught up in so much sin and you have backslid so much that you speak against the people of Yahweh or speak against the things of Yahweh. That's a terrible thing to get caught up in. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. What does it mean to be unthankful? It just means not grateful. And that's, part of, that's another part of the problem. A lot of times people are not satisfied with the things that they have. They're ungrateful for the things that Yahweh has blessed them with. And they always want more instead of doing what the scripture says in Philippians. It says, I, I've learned that whatsoever state I find myself there with to be content. Be satisfied with what you have and don't worry about what you don't have. But what it is is a lot of people say, oh, I'll be happy when such and such happens. I'll be happy when I get that brand new house. I'll be happy when I get that brand new car. I'll be happy when I get a husband or wife. No, God's, and then when those things eventually come to pass in your life, you're still not happy. No, God says, in whatsoever state I find myself, I have learned. So this is a learning process. The scripture says, I have learned to be content. Be satisfied with what you have. Be grateful for the things that you do have. 
Yeah, it might look like things could be better in your life, but just realize, I told this lady the other day, I said, realize, yeah, it might look like it can be better, but it can also be worse. So be glad, be happy that Yahweh has saved you from going to hell for eternity. Be thankful that God has put food on your table and clothes on your back. Be thankful for the transportation. Be thankful for the family that you have. Be thankful for all that you do have. And when you are satisfied with all, the, when you become happy and satisfied with the point that you are in at the, that moment in your life, then God will bless you with even greater blessings. But the key is to be thankful for what you already have. Unholy, sinful, wicked. I talked some months ago about how there was a time when man had their mind on evil continuously. And that goes on even today, even with some believers, where they have holy, unholy thoughts and their mind is on evil continuously. What does God say to do when the enemy begins to attack our thoughts? casting down imaginations in every high thing, which exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh. When that thought tries to come against you, you do what? You cast it down and don't continue to meditate on it because the more you continue to think on evil, the more you continue to think on sin, eventually, the more you meditate on it, eventually you're going to do what? Eventually you're going to act upon it the more you meditate on it. But if you pray and cast down those evil spirits, eventually that temptation will no longer affect you. So keep, we need to live, we need to keep our, ourselves and our thoughts holy. And it says, without natural affection. Without natural affection just means without love, being unforgiving. And again, that's something you don't want to be caught up in because we all do wrong. And if we want Yahweh to forgive us and to show his love, mercy, and forgiveness towards us, then when somebody does us wrong or when we perceive, as I talked about earlier, that people do us wrong, we need to show that same love, mercy, and forgiveness towards them. So then let's talk. The next one is truce breakers, wherein those who, those who don't keep their word, those who break a covenant, and when you backslide, that's the ultimate breaking of the truce because you are breaking that covenant with Yahweh. So you need to repent when that happens. It says, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those who are good. That's a terrible thing when you see somebody who's doing the right thing, trying to walk with Yahweh, and yet you are holding contempt for that person. God never wants us to be caught up in these things. So then it goes on to talk about traitors. What does it mean to be a traitor? A person who betrays a friend, their country, a person who betrays Yahweh. And again, when you begin to backslide, when you begin to turn back to a life of sin, that's being a traitor to, or, to Yahweh. And it says, heady, high-minded lovers of pleasures, lovers of the things of this world more than the lovers of Yahweh. And then this talks about how certain people put on a form of godliness. They put on an act of being godly. This says having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And then God tells us to do what? Need, can't be unequally yoked together with those who are caught up in sin. It says from such, you do what? You turn away from these people. Don't continue to mingle with these people. Don't continue to interact with people that you see caught up in these things. And then it talks a little bit more about the end times in Matthew chapter 24. And I'm a, I, got, I have a lot, but I'm going to go through it quickly as always. Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 through 13. And it says, And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming of the end of the world? So again, what are the signs that Yeshua is coming back? And it says, And Yeshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Don't allow people, don't allow the enemy to deceive you and make that, that thing, that, that date is never coming to pass. 
And it says, this is one of the signs right here. It says, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Messiah, and shall deceive many. And it says, and ye shall hear of what? Wars and rumors of wars. Again, we see wars going on today. See two of them in particular, and I'm sure there's even more stuff going on than that. And rumors of wars. There's been talk about, there have been rumors of wars going on here in the United States, wherein you have a certain political party who is saying that if their candidate does not win this time, or if he gets removed from the ballot, then there is going to be a civil war. And when you hear talk about this thing, again, it can bring, it can disturb your peace. But God says he does not want us to worry about these things. But these are just signs that that end time, that the, these are just signs that Yeshua is soon to come. And it says, see that you be not troubled. Don't worry about these things. Don't allow that fear to overwhelm you. It says, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So we're seeing signs that the end is near. We're seeing signs that Yeshua is going to soon be coming back, but the end is not yet here. It says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And then there shall be what? Famines. And I can remember that and famine is just not countries or people that don't really have enough to eat. And I can remember even... As a teenager, as a little boy, seeing, uh, seeing these young kids in Somalia and in Ethiopia, wherein they were so malnourished that their, that, that their stomachs were actually swollen. And, it, and I, even then, I realized that people shouldn't have to live like that. But these are signs of the end times. And it says, and there shall be famines and pestilences. And, of course, we saw that with COVID. There was even rumors of polio trying to make a comeback some years ago and we've seen all kinds of other things all kinds of pestilences and diseases going on and not just here in the united states but also in the world we lost over a million people alone here in the united states due to covid and this is considered this is considered a, a great first world country but yet we lost so many people because of what because of bad leadership and it says, and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. Now, I live in Virginia, and I remember, and this happened some time ago. This happened back in 2011, where I'm just laying in my bed watching TV. And next thing I know, I feel the whole apartment building that I'm living in, I feel it shaking. And for those who don't know, Virginia never has, Virginia never has earthquakes. And so I, I knew that something spiritual was going on. That's earthquake in the divers places. That's earthquakes in divers places. Earthquakes in unusual places. And I knew that that was just another one of those signs that Yeshua is soon to come. Earthquake never happens in Virginia, but yet we had a minor one. And it says also, all these things are what? The beginning of sorrows. Let me drop down to the 10th verse. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. You see hatred running rampant, not just here in the United States, but throughout the world. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And because, of iniqui because iniquity shall abound, because of rampant sin and all this evil going on in the earth, says the love of many shall do what? shall wax cold. People won't have any love in their hearts. It says in these end times, a lot of people will be bitter. And it says, but, it, but he that shall endure. That means to endure. As I looked it up, it just means we got, sometimes you got to suffer or deal with something that is unpleasant and deal with it patiently. And it says in the end, it says, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. God will bless you. God will deliver you. That hedge is around us as true children of Yahweh. So we don't have to worry just because we see all this negativity and all this chaos going on in the world today. Let's take a look now at Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. Now, when is Yeshua coming? None of us really know. But he says, Matthew chapter 4, 24, verse 36. But of that day and hour no man knoweth, 
not the, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Only Yahweh knows when that day is coming to pass. And it says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For it is in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, doing anything they wanted to do, they were doing. And we see that going on in the world today. Noah tried to warn them that a flood was going to take place, but these people continued to operate in a spirit of ignorance. They continued to operate in sin. And it says, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So eventually that flood came and wiped out all of mankind except for those that entered the ark. You don't want to be like those people that didn't enter the ark wherein you keep on doing what you want to do up until that time of judgment. So it says, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be taken in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. You don't want to be, I know for sure, I don't want to be that one that is left in the field. The two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Again, that just reiterates that you don't want to be that one that is left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord cometh. But this, but know this, that if the good man, and the good man is just the man or the head of the household, if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would have come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. So in other words, if that, head, if that man of the house knew what time that thief was going to break into that house and take his goods, he would not have ever allowed that thief to enter into his house in the first place. And the same thing with Yeshua's coming. If people knew exactly when Yeshua would come, they would keep on doing whatever they want, and then maybe right as that time approaches, then they're going to go ahead and try to get their life right. No, Yahweh wants us to live a life that is holy and acceptable unto him. God wants us to operate in faith. God wants us to want to do the right thing. He doesn't want us to keep on doing our own thing and then wait until that day approaches and then all of a sudden we're going to start to clean up our lives. No, that's not operating in faith. It says, therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful servant? He wants us to be faithful servants, faithful and wise servants. Who, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find doing so. You are blessed and you will be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven if you live right. If you live right and don't operate in ignorance. Don't keep on trying to live in sin. And then when you think that that day is coming, then you're going to try to clean things up. So now I want to get to, I'm going to go back real quick to how should we behave when we see all this negativity going on in the world. God wants us to pray on things. Don't worry about it when that fear begins to try and overwhelm you. Don't worry about, don't continue to think on negativity. I talked earlier about casting down imaginations, and God wants us to think on the right things. We all know this scripture. Let's go to Philippians 4, 6. Philippians 4, 6, and it says, Be careful for nothing. Don't worry about anything, regardless of how big or how small the issue is. God says, be careful for what? Nothing. I don't care how long you've been dealing with the situation. God says, be careful for nothing. Worrying is a sin because it shows a lack of faith in the ability of Yahweh to deliver you out of whatever situation it is you're dealing with. So when we see all these things, when we hear about all this negativity, all this violence going on today, we, God does not want us to worry about it. But it says, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto Yahweh. Heard the bishop talk about it a few weeks ago. If it is big enough to bring worry in your heart, then it's big enough for you to pray on. And then as we begin to pray, something happens. 
that peace of Yahweh begins to take over. And it says, and the peace of Yahweh, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Yeshua Mashiach. And then he gives us a list of things to think on. Shouldn't be thinking constantly about vengeance. Shouldn't be thinking constantly about who made you mad this particular day. Shouldn't be thinking constantly about what you think you are lacking in your life. God shows us the things they've been thinking on. Shouldn't be thinking on, oh, it's taken a while for me to receive certain blessings in my life. God tells you what to think on here. It says, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. And, uh, and that pure, that word pure is really what sticks out to me because that, what's, that just means whatsoever things are holy. Stop thinking on sinful things. And it says, whatsoever things are lovely and whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue and if there be anything to praise Yahweh about, he says to do what? Think on these things. So this talks about not the peace that the world gives. This is talking about the peace of Yahweh. I've experienced that little peace that the world gives. You know, wherein, yeah, there were times and I had my first drink when I was 14, and yeah, I felt a little bit of peace for the first time. I was a shy, I was a shy kid, I was a shy teenager, and a lot, and like for the first time when I took that drink, it seemed like some of that stuff was disappearing. But in the end, I eventually came to my senses. I eventually snapped out of that, and I had more problems than what I did before. So the point I'm trying to make is that the world will give you peace. And, they, and then the world will do what? The world will take it away. But Yava, the peace of Yava is everlasting. It lasts forever. Let's take a look at Yohanan or John chapter 14. Got this and then one more scripture in Matthew and I'm going to close out. says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. So this is a different type of peace. Give I unto you. And then he says to do what? Let not your heart be troubled. So really you have a choice to either allow these things to overwhelm you and let your heart be troubled, or you can do what God says to cast all of your care upon him. So it says, let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. Don't allow any of these things to make you afraid. You have no reason to fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a love power and of a sound mind. And we know, we can trust that Yahweh is always with us. The scripture in Isaiah says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will help thee, yea, I will strengthen thee, yea, and I will do what? I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. God said he would never leave us and he would never forsake us. So we don't have any reason to be afraid just because we see all these things going on in the world today. And now finally, I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 6. We want to know how to live a life that is pleasing to Yahweh. Matthew chapter 6. God wants us to do something with all of our time and all of our energy. And he says, lay not up for yourselves. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. I'm sorry. And it says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth. Do not worry about the things of this world. Where moth and dust does corrupt and thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where, the, where thieves do not break through or steal. So yeah, the enemy might allow you to get something and then eventually it'll be taken away from you. But when God gives you something, it is for you and you will never lose it unless you don't do the right thing. And then yeah, you can end up missing out or losing something that Yahweh has given you. And then this talks about where we need to put all of our time and all of our energy. So it says where your treasure or where your heart, yeah, where your treasure or where your time is, 
there will your heart be also. And then it says, so we need to put our time in the right things. A lot of times we put our time in the wrong things. Too many times we put a lot of time and energy into watching things on TV, getting on Facebook, getting on social media, going on Twitter. A lot of times people too, put too much time and energy into overeating as if that's going to help solve the issues that you are dealing with. But God wants us to put all of our time and all of our energy in everything pertaining to him. Verse 24. And it says, no man can serve two masters. People also need to stop. You cannot li live a life that is pleasing to Yavah if you keep on going back and forth between serving Yavah and then serving the enemy. It says, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. It says, therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Don't worry about clothing. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? God's been clothing you all these years. So isn't he going to content? And he's been blessing you and keeping you all these years, even before you got saved. So won't he continue to do so? And it says, behold, the fowls of the air. So now talk comparing us to the fowls of the air, the birds says, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Sometimes I go into the parking lot in the morning before I start work, and there have been occasions where I've actually fed the seagulls. And even, Yavah even makes sure that they are fed in the morning. So, and aren't we a lot better than what they are? And it says, which of you, by taking thought, how is it that worrying about the things going on in your life it says, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to your stature? By thinking on it and worrying about it, it is not going to solve the issue. And it says, why take ye thought for your raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, for they grow not. They to they grow how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, so now this is talking about the flowers, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. So Yahweh takes care of everything in the earth. And it says, Wherefore, if Yahweh so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, so it, yeah, it lives for a little while and then it dies, but y Yahweh still makes sure the grass of the field, all the plants, all the flowers are clothed and that they are looking beautiful. So it says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not more clothe you, O ye of little faith. God wants us to start operating in faith. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, or wherewithal shall ye be clothed. And then he says, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. The world worries about these things. But we, aren't we supposed to be better than those out in the world? And he says, For your heavenly Father know that ye have need of all these things. And this is just a news flash. God knows what we have need of even more so than what we do. So we can't do more for ourselves than what Yahweh can do for us. So we need to put our trust and our faith in him, even if we feel like we are lacking something. You feel like you're lacking something, drop down and begin to pray. And it says, and I'm going to end on this last scripture. If you're worried about having all these material goods, if you feel like you're lacking something, it's good to pray, but it's also good to do this here. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then what? All these things shall be added unto you. You won't have to chase down the blessings. You won't have to spend your time on a daily basis trying to chase after something that may not come to pass. Instead, if you seek Yavah and put all your energy and all your time into the things of Yavah, he says to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then what? All these things that you have need of, it shall what? It shall be added unto you. Praise Yeshua. Let us end in a prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Yeshua. We thank you and praise you for working it in us to put you first in all aspects of our lives in the mighty name of Yeshua. We thank you and praise you for as we learned your word says, 
We delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. So, Father, we thank you and praise you that we are finding the joy in all things pertaining to you in the mighty name of Yeshua. We bind any spirit that would try to hinder people from seeking you and serving you. We bind all sinful spirits. We bind all distracting spirits and cast them down to the pits of hell. You said, Behold, I gave unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And we loose the Holy Spirit to have free course in the lives of the believers that your perfect will be done. And for those who are not there yet, salvation for all. It is your will that none should perish. We thank you and praise you for this in Yeshua's name. Aman and Aman. Hallelujah. Let's give him one more hand praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is good. His mercy endure forever, and his truth endure to all generations. So now God wants us to operate in faith concerning our finances and to give. You can sit, We have three ways you can give, dollar sign CCCUM. You can send it through Cash App, or you can bring it here in person to 15885 Commerce Court, Upper Marlboro, Maryland, 20774, or you can send it by check or money order to 408 Ashway Lane, Upper Marlboro, Maryland, 20774. Let us, bl uh, let us bless our offering. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Yeshua. We know that when we give, you will rebuke the devourer for our sake. We know that your word says our God shall supply all of our need according to his riches and glory through Yeshua Mashiach. Father, we know that the way for all of our needs to be supplied is to give. You said to give and it shall be given unto you with good measure pressed down, shaken together. Running over shall men give into your bosom. Father, we thank you and praise you for blessing us as we continue to give. We thank you for all of our needs being met here today. In Yeshua's name, Aman and Aman. Hallelujah. Let us lift up our hands before Yahweh. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever, and everyone with uplifted hands say, Amen, I agree. Everybody be blessed. Shalom, shalom.